the question was, for all values of x, which of these is not a function? Well, let's start by reviewing what a function is. And if we want to gracefully avoid using the word in the definition, we're going to have to say that a function is a thingy such that for each input, there's exactly one output. In other words, for each x value I plug into my function, I get exactly one f of x out of it. You might be wondering, what if I plug in an x and I get two values for f of x? Is that a function? Nope, not a function. Okay, what if I get no values for f of x? No, also not a function. One means one. So what are some examples of things that aren't functions? How about f of x equals plus or minus x? Suppose I plug in 2 for x. What's my f of x? Well, plus 2 and minus 2. That's two answers, not a function. All right, what about f of x equals 1 over x? Well, in this case, if I plug in 2, I'm actually fine, because f of x is 1 half. That's one answer. OK, what if I plug in negative 10? f of x equals 1, negative 1 tenth? Also one answer, totally fine. Aha, but what if I plug in 0? You can't divide by zero. Try it in your calculator. It'll give you an error. Your calculator knows to not even go there. You don't want to know what happens if you actually try to divide by zero. f of x equals 1 over x is not a function. Now, on the other hand, I can redefine it so that it is a function. I can say, OK, what if I say x can't be zero? Well, then you're fine. It's a function. So going back to our original options. There's got to be one among these for which there's some x I can plug in. And I get either more than one f of x or no f of x at all. Keep in mind that fractional exponents are roots. So raising something to the 1 half, that's the square root. Raising something to the 1 third is the cubed root. And you might recall that you can't take the square root or any even powered root of a negative number. So let's zero in on b here that says f of x equals negative x to the 1 half. I can rewrite it as f of x equals square root of negative x. And if I plug in a value for x that happens to be positive, like 2, I end up with the square root of negative 2, for which the answer is an imaginary number. Thank you.